you had this Church of Christ doctrine combined with this shepherding, discipling doctrine throughout the 1970s. And Crossroads grew like crazy numerically. Um, they started other Crossroads campus ministries at other Churches of Christ that were associated with other college campuses. And again, there were reports of abuse, but there wasn't a big push for anything to stop it because, hey, we have people coming in, we have money rolling in, we have things are just absolutely crazy. We have all these bunch of young people here. So it was very intoxicating. And one of the people they converted in 1971 is a man named uh, Thomas Wayne McKean, also known as Kip, Mc Kip, Kip McKean. Mm -hmm. um, so he was converted down there in 1971. And as time went on, he graduated. He met his wife, Elena, there. He got married. And he decided to go off and be a – try to do, you know, seminary, get some – actual practical Bible classes, but he failed out after one semester. Um, so he decided to become a Crossroads campus minister, and he went to a couple different places. He stirred up a lot of people and started ministries, but the churches were like, well, this is a little bit too much for us, because here's the thing. The um, Church of Christ and all the Restoration Movement churches, they are in a um, – they're – they are led by a plurality of elders. Mm -hmm. So and that, that's, the, that's the model of the church leadership. They are individually accountable. They are, the church is just only accountable to that group of elders individually. So they're autonomous churches. So the thing was, in these crossroads churches, people started to discover that, hey, you have the eldership over here with, you know, the children and, you know, most of the members and especially the more senior members, the, the elderly. So you have a traditional group over here, but you also have a side pyramid control structure going on the side where you have the campus minister at the top and his ministers underneath him and his small group leaders under him. So there's kind of a, two groups and one's more of the, the traditional type of organization. The other one's more of a strict pyramid. And elders in these other churches were like, oh, we don't like what is going on here. And not just because of the power struggle, but also the, you started to see, hey, this doesn't look right. Something's kind of fishy here. So Kip did that and he got his funding cut and that led him to being asked to lead a dying Church of Christ in uh, one of the suburbs of Boston, Massachusetts in 1979. And one of his only major pushes for him is contingencies for him coming there is that he wanted them to let him disciple not only the campus ministries, but the entire church. He wanted to set up the entire church in a discipling structure. And he wanted the leadership there in Boston, in that little church in Boston, to sign off on it. And they did. And in the middle of 1979, uh, we got the start of the, uh, the original Boston Church of Christ. And of course, he, um, he basically got campus ministries going there. He got the entire church in a shepherding hierarchy and it took off numerically. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you had most of the discipling of the Church of Christ going on at Crossroads in Gainesville, Florida. You started to have this other group up in Boston, Massachusetts starting to steal their thunder. So Boston became more powerful. Crossroads in Gainesville with Chuck Lucas started to become less powerful. And ultimately, in the early 1980s, 1982, they sent out their first church plannings. They sent out London. But they actually started to send out church plannings where basically they're going to start one of their shepherding churches of Christ, which are separate from everyone, the, all the other churches of Christ in that, sep in that city. Um, and um, it was very, relatively, it was very successful. Um, because, again, you had Kit McKean on this top of this pyramid. And one of the things that was broken down at that time, it was each church was supposed to be, each church of Christ is supposed to be autonomous. And the discipling ministries, especially the whole church, um, at some point they decided, no, you're going to have to have some control. You're going to have to have some connection back to the head. Um, back in Boston. 